Alrighty, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and another episode of The Ride Today. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, I like to make these little videos, have some cycling footage in there, and I just like to go over everything that I don't get to cover my live streams, my vlogs, and all my other videos. So that's what these all are. And these also include everything that I do throughout the week as well that I don't get to feature again in my vlog. So that being said guys, let's get to the video. Alrighty folks, welcome back to another The Ride Today. Now you guys are seeing my descent down Double Peak the other day and you are probably reading the title of this video and, and one wondering when the epic footage of my crash is gonna happen. But um, guys, it's nothing too, too serious, but I, I did get it on film. You guys will see it in the later part of this, so. Um, but yeah, I really wanna go over how you guys actually, um, you know, should handle flats, handle crashes, uh, anything like that that will happen on the road. It's not a matter of, um, it's not a matter of if, but when because stuff like this is, hap is going to happen. You just have to brace for it, and that's essentially what I did. And uh, if you're a roadie, even if you're riding normal mountain bikes, uh, going down uh, descents like this at a high rate of speed, you have to really be aware of what's going around you, whether it's cars, whether it's people, whether it's really anything. Uh, even little rocks on the road that can actually be uh, the main thing to cause a crash, and that's what happened here with me. You guys will see it coming up in a little bit, but essentially what happened is I'll kind of detail it before um, I really get to the actual snippet of the video, which will be in a few seconds, but uh, uh, Rock was in the road. I have brand new tires, brand new bike still, and at a high rate of speed when you're with that much resistance, or I'm sorry, with that much pressure in your tires, you roll over something like that, it's gonna blow a hole in your tire. Uh, and you can you can actually lose control of the bike. And thankfully I didn't lose control of the bike, but there's a lot of construction going on in this part of uh, Devil Peak around San Leo Hills where I usually ride. And there was just a lone rock and I didn't see it. I wasn't looking like I should have. And that's again, being aware. Guys, you gotta always be aware. And um, I looked up right after it happened and I thought that the um, the rock was actually, I mean, granted I ran, I ran over it and everything, but it didn't cause the flat. So I didn't think that there was anything wrong and then I got to turn around, you guys will see it there. I went Pow. Zoink. And there you go. So after that, we had the walk of shame back to my apartment because I didn't bring a spare tube with me. So the big takeaway here guys is always make sure you have a spare tube. Always make sure that you're uh, preparing for stuff like that to happen on the road. Preparing is huge. Always bring your spare tube, uh, bring your inflation, bring obviously a phone or anything, spare money in case you need to you know, call anybody. Um, but yeah, stuff like that's gonna happen, but the biggest thing is to not let it create a huge setback for you because that can let people, or let lead people, I should say, into not riding. And that's just another part of riding, guys. So the other part of the video that I wanted to address too is a huge thing recently with me is, uh, and you guys again will read the title of the video and, and see it, is, is why I stopped fasting. Now for those of you who have been around the channel for a while, have seen old videos of mine, uh, you'll know that I was a pretty big advocate of, of fasting for a long time and actually followed that sort of uh, protocol, I guess you can say, of uh, really having like my first meal, usually in the, in the later part of the day around 3 or 4 p.m., sometimes until 5 p.m. Granted, I, I work in a bicycle shop and uh, a lot of times it's really hard for me to get in a solid meal of, of um, you know calories and, and all of that, um, a, a substantial amount of calories until that time. But I've been making more and more of an effort, I would say over the past few months really to, to you know, get more food in, energy in at an earlier part of the day. And um, you know, I there's gonna be a lot of uh, backlash, I guess you can say, because there are a lot of advocates out there of intermittent fasting, and I'm not at all um, saying intermittent fasting is, is harmful or negative. It can be in for, for certain people, and I've talked about it a few times on my channel, but for what I do, for what works for me, I just found that uh, just, I mean, fasting over an extended period of time just isn't really conducive for me and my goals right now. Um, you know, people have so many different lifestyles and have different activity levels, but for me, again, it just didn't work out, and I found that lately, uh, getting in a meal uh, around uh, 11 to 12 
in the afternoon is what works best for me now. I'm not one of those people that still, I never really was or will be a guy that likes to just get up and eat, you know, a big breakfast right off to start off the day, uh, unless I'm doing a challenge. But uh, yeah, so that's just what I found um, is, is beneficial for me now. I've been reading more studies uh, recently, which has actually found that uh, muscle protein synthesis is, is actually um, elevated and uh, is actually more optimal in individuals that uh, have more, I, I believe it's four protein rich meals, or four or five protein rich meals uh, throughout the day. Um, but then again, guys, you can take studies with a grain of salt, you really just have to to find out what uh, works best for you. And I've always, always said that, have to find out what, what works best for you and experiment with so many different things before you really find that ideal method. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm gonna get comments in the comment section that are gonna go, oh, you're technically still fasting when you go to sleep. I know that, guys, but you know what I'm trying to say. I'm saying intermittent fasting, and that's what I'm talking about here, so. Um, but yeah, overall, it's a great great way for people that are sedentary, that have desk jobs, that aren't really that active to, uh, to structure their, their eating, really. I mean, uh, the only real downside to intermittent fasting, I found that is uh, it's gonna let you, um, or it's gonna lead you into needing more food, needing more food, excuse me, to be satisfied. So that's the real negative thing to it. And I feel like that people, uh, that do practice intermittent fasting or just any sort of fasting for uh, prolonged periods of time, when they come off that type of uh, eating routine, eating protocol, I guess you can say, um, eating normally again is very hard and uh, they are used to eating larger amounts of food. So they're more prone to gaining weight when they do come off these types of plans. So that's just my thoughts on it. Uh, that's why I stopped doing it. So I'm finding now that it's, again, it's really, really hard for me to get full. So I'm going through a little phase right now that I'm gonna have to deal with, but then again, that's why I'm using it to, uh, you know, get those gains, right? Yeah. But um, anyways, guys, kind of switching gears here and going into the, uh, the last portion of the video is the Olympia this year happened. And it happened uh, last night, I guess you can say, since today is the 18th. And uh, shout out to my hand there. It's actually pretty beautiful on my ride home tonight. But um, yeah, so uh, honestly guys, I knew Phil Heath was gonna win. I mean, let's just be honest here. He's, um, he is the man when it comes to the Olympia. Uh, I was a huge Kai Green fan, I uh, still am. And to be honest, I'm not like the biggest follower of all the bodybuilders out there. I mean, I know like Big Ramy and um, you know Dennis Wolf, Dexter Jackson, Phil Heath, obviously Jay Keller, like all those big name guys. But I mean, at the end of the day, I was more um, I was more looking at the actual expo itself, and more people were asking me like, "Oh, Eric, why aren't you at the expo this year? Blah blah blah. Why don't you go?" And to be honest, guys, every fucking expo is exactly the same. The LA Fit Expo, um, the uh, the Olympia Expo, all of those different, I mean, uh, expos that happen, like the Arnold Expo, like, you're gonna see pretty much the same shit regardless of where you go. And honestly, guys, the only reason why I would go to the Olympia or any one of those expos is to be around my friends, to be around the people that support my channel, to meet you guys, to, um, you know, be with Cellucor, like at a Cellucor booth or something like that. I just don't like being in those places. I mean, it's just it's just a weird vibe to me. I don't like the ideas that are spread, and um, you know, it's just not my thing. It's not my cup of tea, I guess you can say. So again, like I would just go to hang out with like Brian Turner, Chelsea, um, you know, Beast to Beast, like all those guys that I'm really cool with, and just want to be around cool people. Other than that, there's really no reason for me to be there. So, I mean, I just got the wrong vibe when. I mean, I saw a lot of different videos of it, and um, you know, I did have a great experience at the LA Fit Expo last year. But I definitely won't be um, going to many expos unless you know I know a lot of you are going to be there, and uh, you know, I just I would just go there to be social and to steal all the protein supplements and eat all of them. So, <laughs> what else do people do there, anyways? Let's be honest, guys. Like, really. Um, I mean, you get free protein bars, cool. That's like literally what I would do. Now, it's kind of getting me another idea in my head. Hmm. I think something might be coming up, guys. Next expo, who wants to see it? How about this, guys? If this video gets 100 likes, I will go to the next expo uh, and create a challenge out of it. Now, it's up there to 200 likes. 200 likes, so hit that thumbs up button, guys. 
Anyways, everybody, finishing off the video right now. This is just my ride home today. And, um, you know, really finding that commuting to work on the weekends is a really good relaxer for me. But then again, my legs are taking a shit ton of, of beating, I guess you can say right now. And, I'm, yeah, I really need to, uh, to focus more just on riding for fun. So, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. See you later. All right, everybody. So, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I really, really, really like doing these. There's a lot of cyclists on my channel, but there's also a lot of you as well that don't ride bikes. So, that's great, too. Granted, I think you still should ride a bike. Anyways, guys, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that thumbs up. Let me know how you like the video. Let me know what else you want to see from me. Like I said, I have a lot planned. I have a lot coming up in the future. So, I'm definitely excited for that. If you haven't already, feel free to follow me on my social media. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. You know the drill. Thanks again for watching the video guys and go ride a bike. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What 9,000? Uh